Hey guys, I'm going to be casting Game of Migration today, so I just wanted to give you guys a real quick overview of what the map looks like. If you see on the sides we have these small islands, and in the middle there's this big mainland. And the islands don't have enough resources to support you for the entire game, so you need to migrate yourself at some point to the mainland. So it's a pretty fun map, then let's go get, get into the game now. So here we are in game. This was a game in the RTS League. So uh, it's between BF and NHN. This was BF's home map. They picked migration and they can pick any civs they want. So no restrictions, literally any civ. So we have BF Action J playing here in the Cyan as the Vikings. Then we have BF Action Dune in the yellow, also as the Vikings. Then we have El Quark playing here as the Persians in the green, and finally Damax 1 in the gray, playing as the Japanese. And then for the NHN, we have Stressed Out in the orange, who are playing as the Vikings. We'll have Marco in the purple, also as the Vikings. We have Igloo in the red, playing as the Japanese. And finally Sobek in the blue, and where is that Scott? There is playing as the Mayans. Now, as you know, migration is supposed to have that landmass in the middle, but if we turn off the, fo the fog of war, you might notice that something is kind of missing. So now, you might be thinking that this map is bugged because there's no mainland, but that's not true. There actually is a mainland. The map's just bugged because the mainland glitched itself over here. <laughs> so. We see this gold, berry patch, another gold, some more berries, a whole bunch of sheep, two boar, and another gold, all made all made their way over here onto this tiny island on the side of the map. But now the players, apparently, someone's actually told them that the map is bugged, and they mentioned it in the chat. <laughs> apparently there's no mid-island. <laughs> but, but the players are deciding to continue, so this will be one interesting match of migration. It is pretty fair because it is between two Viking players on the side of the map, so it's not like it's favoring one team and one team automatically will get the mainland. So we'll see how this works out. And Action J looks like he found his sheep, put them under his TC, and is now pushing in his deer. Of course, looks like he only has. Uh, but it looks like he probably killed the sheep already. Only has three deer. Of course, migration. I know at least in a 1v1, I think, for all versions of the map is this way. You have a 90% chance of getting 4 deer, and a 10% chance of only having 3 deer. And that can actually be a big difference, because you don't actually start with any boar on this map, and you only start with 6 sheep. So, we're going to see these players pushing in their deer, trying to take them as efficiently as possible. And we'll see if he goes either for a very quick dock, and we'll see if he docks either in the back or in the middle towards where the mainland is supposed to be. I guess the good thing is, since there is no mainland, there actually is going to be quite a lot of fish here in the middle. And it looks like Marco building the first dock. And where is he docking? He is docking over here in the back. And he has some really nice fish. And I guess the one good thing about this map is for everyone, except as long as you don't dock over here, you're going to have some really, really good fish. And of course, even even this dock, not in the best position, but he does have some good fish. So since Action J is docking in the front, he probably will be trying to go for a faster uptime. Of course, he does have five villagers on wood. This is building that dock. We'll look to get some fishing ships out and start fishing on that great fish marlin. Already building his first fishing ship. And we'll see he's stressed out. Is he docked anywhere yet? He's docking over here in the back. And he'll have quite a lot of fish over here. And so he probably isn't going to be going as aggressive. Might try to get out more fishing ships. While we'll probably see Action J try to go out quickly. Marco looks like he's doing loom. Of course, you don't have to do loom on migration, but if you have problems getting resources at the start of the game, you might as well do it just so that your town center isn't idle. Since Viking galleys are cheaper, it's not as bad for them to do loom as it would be for another sieve. Since they're Vikings, instead of costing 30 gold, they cost, I think it's only 24 gold. In fact, let's do 
just verify that real quick. Their galleys are, yep, 72 wood, 24 gold. So even if you do research loom, you can still produce two galleys from the 50 gold you have left over, even if you don't collect any more gold. And you see Action J also doing loom, and can also help you click up a bit faster because you spend villager time, um, or because you're spending 50 gold instead of 50 food in the same amount of time. Uh, it looks like probably isn't going to have quite the resources he needs to click up, but will probably idle his town center until this deer is finished. I don't think that one deer is going to give him quite enough food though, but he does have his fishing ships down here. So he is idle in his town center to try to go up really quickly. He needs just a bit more food and he'll need these three fishing ships to give him the rest of the food he needs. He opted to skip the mill. He only need two dark age buildings to go up. So we'll have a lumber camp and a dock. Meanwhile, we see more fishing ships being added in in the back by Gray, and we'll check out his dock ship, adding in more fishing ships, especially as the Japanese. He's going to look at adding a lot of fishing ships. The Japanese do get the bonus that their fishing ships have more input, have more hit points in Pierce Armor, so they're harder to take down, and they do work faster, so they give you a bit more food than other civs. Let's see that report. Also adding in a lot of fishing ships as the pocket could be looking to go for a fish boom and as the Persians might even be looking to do some slinging. Maybe slinging one of his Viking players can be a very strong strategy on migration for the pockets to sling the flanks and flanks to get water control. And we see Action Dune. He actually is going for a slower feudal, but adding in a few more fishing ships himself. As docked on the back. But we'll still be pretty close to Igbu's dock, who is the Japanese, and we'll be adding in lots of fishing ships as the Japanese. And even though they're pretty close, early aggression might not pay off because these Japanese fishing ships are quite tanky. 6 PS armor, 120 HP, compared to 4 PS armor and only 60 HP. So it does take quite a bit of time to take them out. But we see here that Action Boom going up without a mill even. And the same thing from Action J, both without a mill, whereas the Max 1 and let's see, he's done a mill, but Alphark Persians, he's skipping the mill. Meanwhile, we see we do have a mill for Igloo, we do have a mill for Sobek, we do have a mill from our Viking's pocket, and we, uh, we do have a mill from our Viking's flank stressed out. And it looks like, <laughs> it looks like Action J brought a fishing ship over and just discovered all of the sheep on this island. And he's going to be very greedy and take the sheep away from stressed out side of the island and move all of the sheep over to his own side of the island. Of course, you cannot put sheep on transport ships, but it'll be interesting to see if he actually does anything with this island or tries to land on it. But of course, he is getting galleys out right away. And we see stressed out. Still in the Dark Age, just now doing Loom, so he's quite a far way away from Feudal. Still trying to add in more fishing ships, has quite a lot of fishing ships, but isn't going to be clicking up soon. And this Feudal Aggression from Action J looks like it's going to pay off as he's going to get his galleys out. And this still hasn't been spotted by uh, Stressed Out, but there he is. He'll have seen that he went up to the Feudal Age, and if he's paying attention, he'll see that galley. and. Ooh, unfortunately, his gold is in a very bad location behind this wood line, so those galleys could come in and deny it. They are, of course, really close because of this glitched mainland, and his fishing ships are going to be under attack, and if Action J just camps a couple, yeah, he's not going to be able to access that gold at all. He'll need to maybe put a watchtower there just to defend his villagers, but if Action J just can camp a couple of galleys here, that'll be GG for stressed out pretty quickly as these fishing ships are going to be forced to run away, no longer going to be working. It's finally up to feudal, but all of this economy now is being idle. And the same thing, we see fast feudal age from our Vikings player going to attack Igloo, but he is going around, unfortunately for him, the wrong side of the island, so he won't get to these fishing ships, and he will give Igloo the time to reach the feudal age. And as the Japanese, he will be able to protect his fishing ships a bit better. But now, let's see, only one sheep left on that island is this galley is just doing a little dance trying to path itself around the sheep on the edge of that island. And yeah, stressed out is 
pretty much out of the game at this point. Still not feudal, really far behind in galleys, fishing ships running all over the map. Only who doesn't even have any sheep on the mainland, they all belong to Teal. And he is pretty dead. He's going to need to rely on his pocket to save him. But even the pocket being harassed by Action J. Action J showing he knows how to play this map. And Igloo also, his gold under threat from these galleys towards the edge of the map. And his fishing ships, not really in that much danger because he's a Japanese. But doesn't have the galleys out that he needs. And Action Dune is able to do a lot of damage to them, trying to micro this galley side to side, dodge some arrow fires. But up here, still. Not really having the numbers that he needs to take a fight here. And this fast feudal aggression from the BF team really playing out well for them as they show BF doesn't just stand for Black Forest, it must also stand for migration. And there you go, Watchtower coming up for stressed out. That's what he needs to be able to fend off galleys away from that gold if he has any hope of being able to mine it and putting up a market but really has a ton of wood but no food because those fishing ships are running. Don't have to idle the TC now as he doesn't have food to make villagers and on the other side of the map still Igloo being overrun having to run his fishing ships away and we'll see where these galleys head maybe they go towards the pocket could do a lot of damage against these mine fishing ships in the pocket and things are looking really good for BF right now and that is exactly where they're going. As let's go and take a look at Action Dune's perspective. And he's. Who could. Yep, he does pick a villager. And we'll also pick off that Eagle Scout. And we'll see, he's going to continue this way. As fishing ships haven't started running yet. There they go. That Japanese bonus for this team paying off huge as the galleys have extra line of sight. And not going to target them now, but are going to force them away from the dock. And we'll see green here is just, yep, you see, uh, so Sobek just slung a lot of resources to Igloo, who is going to the Castle Age and going to have to try to do something at the Castle Age, as Marco is trying to hold until he hits the Castle Age, but we also see that the Max is slinging to, yes, so we have, for the BF team, both pockets are slinging as the Max is slinging Action J, and our Persian player, El Quirk, is the Viking player, uh, Action Dune. So, Double Sling coming in for the BF team. They obviously have a plan. Their, pop, their flanks are already ahead, and they're getting slung to stay even more ahead. Meanwhile, they are trying to harass the pockets, and if they can group up and come in and take a fight, we can really clean up this navy here. Because there are pretty much no ships out for our mine player as well, and all these fishing ships are getting cleaned up, so BF showing they know exactly how to play their home map, that there's a reason they picked it. These fishing ships just dodging arrows for now, but these ones aren't going to be so lucky. They're going to get pinned down by these galleys here, and they'll be taken out as they try to run away. And now we see Action J up to the Castle Age. Immediately the War Galley upgrades coming in. And if we go check his resources real quick, we'll see. War Galley coming in, Blacksmith Botkin Arrow coming in, and is he, yep, already starting to build that university for the ballistics. And we'll come in, pick off a couple more of these fishing ships maybe before taking the fight, but no, we just don't do any of those uh, galleys. But we'll pull back until he does get his own War Galley. Might take a few losses there, but at the same time, Yellow's coming in over on this side. Now, I could deny that university if he has the ships there in time, we'll see it coming up and hitting the villagers on the berries as now they're taking the fight on the right side uh, might not have the numbers yet he needs to take that fight but he will indeed deny that university for now but he will be forced away due to that war galley upgrade but still it is pretty much 2v1 now but saying that stressed out has managed to get a few of his own galleys but he's still in the feudal age and look at all these resources from action J. he's pretty much ready to hook up to the imperial age now just trying to put down that siege workshop at the back but he will be harassed a little bit maybe we'll try to build maybe a monastery here somewhere safer uh, still no one going for that mainland yet just all the cheap coming off to the sides has a few more galleys patrolling down here Seeing if there's anything else they can pick off from blue. Lots of deleted... What? What? Is that just deleted? Is that just a bunch of houses or something? 
Maybe he tried to build houses and was harassed by the galleys, I don't know. That's weird, but he is building some houses over here. Maybe he just wasn't able to protect those houses and they got destroyed, because he's down. He's now housed, so he has lots of destroyed houses. But we see a Japanese player now making some progress, pushing in. Action Dune had been harassing Blue, so that gave Igu the chance he needed to come back. Has managed to build a lot of ships, but is going to fight underneath Yellow's docks. Yellow has a lot of docks. If we check Action Dune's resources, he is also doing pretty well. Maybe he could sell some wood, but yeah, he's getting pretty close to pick up an imp as well. Now popping out of the docks, going to force Igloo back. He can't continue fighting out of it, uh, underneath those docks when there's this many war galleys from yellow. Yellow pretty much cleaned up blue at this point. Purple still has some fishing boats, but if we look at his military account, only 20. He's now coming in on the side, trying to help out his flank, trying to take out these docks. As a few galleys are being run away. But stressed out still looks very, very far. Yeah, there's no way he's being able to pick up to the castle very soon. And, uh, oh, that's why he deleted the houses. Looks like, uh, looks like Blue's going to write a message across the map in some palisades. Of course, that's always a good tactic to, uh, to do when you're completely out of the game, just write a message in Palisades. Even use berries as part of the Palisades too. Unfortunately, you can't delete the berries. <laughs> Trying to fit that that K off the side of his island, but uh, the glitch map generation might not even let him finish it. Oh, it looks like he'll be able just to fit it in. <laughs> he needs to get that villager to wall it. No. As up here, this mainland still not contested, but Orange did manage to get all those sheep back, but he's just gonna leave them there, not going to bring them back to his side of the map. And Doc coming up at the back. One more galley trying to clean up the rest of these galleys here. Okay, we do have a transport ship from Gray coming over to Cyan's Island. Maybe maybe he'll hope he'll help to transport over here. As we see he's doing Carto. Uh, Action Dune is up to the Imperial Age, as Marco, the only one left still alive for NHN, really, is also up to the Imperial Age himself. But if you look at the military count. Still, still kind of even with Action J, might be able to do something over here, but once once one of the other flanks comes in, it's pretty much going to end things. He's able to do everything he can just to hold. Still, let's see, how many fishing ships does he still have? Still has, up down to three fishing ships, unfortunately. And that's obviously wrong because there are four fishing ships here. But close enough. As we have an engagement down here, as Cyan might be caught out of position as Purple brings his navy down from the top. It looks like Cyan has some ships elsewhere on the mini map. But yeah, these ships not taking the best engagement coming out of those docks, but still we'll get a few more kills on Cyan as he tries to retreat. We'll probably try to we'll see if he patrols after or just stays here. Nope, he's going to get back. But at the same time, Action J bringing in more ships at the top, harassing these docks. Still not letting Stressed Out do anything. He is stressed out, and so we is still really far behind. Igloo's still doing what he can on this side to hold, but we will now be at a big disadvantage as Galleon has come in for Yellow, and Yellow should be able to just dominate this fight now. Igloo being forced to retreat, even though he will lose some ships, and has has managed at this point to stay even in military numbers, trying to bring in more boats from the bottom, trying to get a fight here. Maybe catch Yellow out of position before he can mass up Galleons and is actually taking a pretty decent fight, but Yellow, we'll see if he has any boats elsewhere, but since he's fighting right underneath his docks, he should have the reinforcement advantage, but and still not the greatest fight in the world for Yellow, but Igloo is going to have to retreat, get back underneath his own docks, just hope, do what he can to produce ships, and there we go, he's, Igloo's resigning right there, he doesn't want any more of this, he's Xing the Palisade wall message, Beautiful message there as his team is now resigning. So, even though the map was glitched, we did see a really nice strategy play out there by BF. There, I went with the Japanese and the Persians and double Vikings, 
and had a good plan that their pockets would sling the Viking players to win the flanks, and then the flanks could go castle and continue dominating from there. And they went for a really fast feudal, even managed to have a nice build where they skipped the mill and didn't even need to put that down in the Dark Age. And of course they did choose the Persians because... who was the Persians? Yep. Because they start with 50 extra food and 50 extra wood, so it helps you get off to a good start in migration since your sheep are normally really far from your town center and you don't have those boar and your deer can sometimes be tricky to push in. And it also helps you get up the dock earlier, get out your fishing ships, get out a mill if you need to without running into any problems waiting for wood to come in. This allows you to be a bit faster, especially with the Viking team bonus. And the Mayans, you know, Mayans can be strong if you can make a play for the mainland, maybe build a castle, get out some plumed archers, but uh, unfortunately they're not really of much use in this map generation. Uh, there we go. Fuck indeed is a great way to describe this map generation. Let's go take a quick look at the achievements. And we'll look at these military stats. Action Dune. Igloo. At least, no. He was pretty far behind against the slung Vikings, but still managed to hang in there pretty well. And we'll look at the Japanese player and the Persian player both having really strong economies, getting in a really strong sling to their flanks. And technology stats, we see Action J getting up really fast, same thing with Action Dune, 1046 in 11 minutes. Did out his TC there, but got up really fast, was able to take stress out completely out of the game, especially with that unfortunate gold generation. And our Persian player showing off the, those Persian TCs getting out. Games Villager Hive 94. So we take a look at this timeline. We'll see just Action J, Action Dune, look at those militaries, those graphs. Such a nice military. Alright, thank you guys all very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.